Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel. I'm Rob and today we'll be jumping into Tales from Tech Support. Our first story today comes to us from Osmios Biter. My team has a nemesis. Let's jump right in. This isn't my first time posting in this sub. Up until now, I've mostly posted about funny stories or bizarre incidents, but this is a wholly different beast. It's also really, really long. I am a senior network engineer working in a secondary school in the UK. My team consists of five members, myself, another senior engineer, Rob, a support technician, Andy, our new apprentice, Tyler, and a teacher from senior leadership, Kat. Kat doesn't do much within the team with regards to IT, but acts more as a line manager to make sure we're meeting targets and to meet with the governors on our behalf. I've not mentioned the structure of the team before, but in this story, it's particularly relevant. Names have been changed to keep people anonymous. On to the story. About a year ago, a new IT teacher started working at the school who I'll call Mr. X for simplicity's sake. As he joined when schools were shut due to what's been going on in the world, we didn't get a chance to meet him in person. So at first, all of our interactions with him were via email or Teams. The emails were all what you'd expect, nothing out of the ordinary. One day, Mr. X emails and asks about Power BI, since he had just heard about it and wants to use it to do things like track student grades, etc. I email back and say he's more than welcome to use it. We're a 365 school, and the basic version is included in our volume license. I do, however, advise him that the school already pays for a software called Formatrix that is specifically designed for school's performance data and that all of our staff use. He replies that he had training on Formatrix when he started, but thinks Power BI would work better. On this point, I personally disagree, but didn't say anything as maybe he just had a preference. I didn't think anything more of it until a few weeks later, Mr. X emailed in asking for the full version of Power BI Pro for all staff. He says he showed his data tracker in Power BI to the deputy head and told him it would work better if all of the staff used it. The only problem being that for users to share their work in the program, they needed Pro. So I sit down and run the numbers. Every teacher would need it if it was going to replace 4Matrix, so that would be over 100 staff. Even with the massive discount we would get from being an educational institution, the cost of Power BI Pro for that many users was more than double the cost of our 4 Matrix license for the entire school trust. Not to mention needing to purchase more Power BI licenses than we would need in case staff numbers change. Combine that with training all staff on a new system when they're all already used to the other program and it just seems a bit ridiculous. So I had a meeting with the deputy head and Mr. X over teams where I laid out my above points and the DH very rationally said no way to Mr. X's request. A week later, I got a team's call from Andy. The gist of it was, I just had a weird call from Mr. X. He says he wants me to log into our 365 admin console and screen share with him. Apparently he's been on the phone to Microsoft and they've said that Power BI is cheaper for schools and you were looking in the wrong place for the costing. This boils my blood for a number of reasons. One, he's not believed me when I laid out the facts to him. Two, he's gone behind my back to another member of my team and implied I don't know how to do my job. And three, he wants to view a secure console that he shouldn't be going anywhere near. So I ask Andy to call Mr. X and then add me in. He does and I ask Mr. X to explain himself. The response I got was to the effect of, well, I phoned Microsoft and they said it was only X amount per user for schools. Hmm, yes, that is true. Okay, do me a favor. Is that per month? Knowing full well it is. Yes. Okay, now times that by 130. Now times that by 12. That's the same figure I presented to you in the meeting with the deputy head. At this point, he left the call without saying anything more. A week later was the beginning of the summer holidays so we didn't hear anything more from him until September came around and schools reopened, and that is where things began to escalate. Every day we received at least one email from him into our help desk, all with the same subject. Send a runner, no details of the issue, nothing typed into the message itself. More often than not, it was something that did not require a physical presence, students forgetting passwords, etc., which considering the global situation where we need to limit contact was becoming quite distressing and frankly rather annoying. 
I logged a complaint about him to senior leadership over the emails, and a week later, we started to only receive one per week, and all written to include the issues in the email. However, this then invited a different problem. He was sending emails at the end of his lessons, so by the time someone replied or attended, if needed, we were too late. Example, kid forgets a password needs a reset. By the time we get the email, the lesson is over and the student has been sat doing nothing for two hours. We send the new password back to Mr. X and he can't tell him what it is since he's teaching a different class. Or, email received saying, monitor not working, Andy goes to the room, there's a completely different class there with another teacher who tells him, oh yeah, that one over there was switched off at the plug, but I just turned it on myself. Again, this starts to really annoy me, so I keep a log of everything. Around the end of October, we refreshed a number of our staff laptops, so as part of that, I had to retire the older devices. Mr. X's laptop was only a year old, but I decided to give him one of the new ones since he teaches IT and runs a lot of specialist software. My logic being, maybe doing something nice for him will get him to lay off us a bit. Nope. For context, his office is inside a metal pod, I've mentioned these before in another post here, that kills Wi-Fi signal. Because of this, my team installed a number of Ethernet cables and ran them to each desk and told all staff in those offices to use Ethernet on their laptops when in the office. What, dear people, do we think Mr. X did after getting the brand new laptop? Why, he never plugged it in and ran five speed tests a day on the Wi-Fi while in the office and sent screenshots to all of us for two whole weeks. Rob at this point was getting annoyed and took the laptop to test it in the pod. On the Wi-Fi, 7.65 megabits per second down, plugged into the Ethernet, 987.14 megabits per second down. I've memorized those numbers, and I doubt I will ever forget them until the day I die. Another complaint logged against Mr. X. December rolls around and for about a month and a half, Mr. X has been suspiciously quiet. So I'm assuming that the complaints have finally done some good until the last day of term when I was covering for Andy on the help desk and Mr. X decides to pay me a personal visit. He puts down his nice new laptop and says that he's trying to install software on it, but it's not letting him. I explain that our group policy stops anyone that isn't an admin from installing software so I'll have to do it for him, which I'm happy to do. As I'm installing the software, the following conversation occurs. You know, I've had nothing but problems with this laptop. Excuse me? Well, it's just not very good. I had loads of issues with the Wi-Fi and now software. The problems you had weren't to do with the laptop. Your network card is so good you almost get a gig on a hard line. It's got an i7 and an SSD, as well as 8 gigabytes of RAM, no one else with this model has complained about it. Objectively, this is the best device in the school. F off. You know what? You can install the software yourself. What? Come on, man. No, you think you know more about it than I do? Well, then you can fix it yourself. At which point, I promptly logged out, stood up, walked off, and made yet another formal complaint. After this, I had a meeting with the head, whereby he informed me that they were going to be putting Mr. X on probation. He also told me something very interesting, that Mr. X had expressed interest in Kat's job and that he wanted to line manage my team. My response to that was that, in no uncertain terms, if Mr. X ever got that job, I would be handing in my notice that same day. The head then reassured me that he would never consider Mr. X in that role since it was clear that he had not been respecting my team. Here is where I thought it had ended. After the Christmas break, schools did not reopen and classes were held over Teams. We didn't receive a single email from Mr. X in this time. Bliss. In this time, the government very kindly donated the school some money for new laptops for students and we also purchased some new devices as part of our refresh plan. The closure was actually good for us since it gave us time to set them up. Every department got at least 32 new laptops to use in lessons upon their return. Monday this week, I send an email to departments telling them about their new laptops and saying that they need to come and sign the forms to get the keys to their cabinets. I will be out on the help desk all day with the forms and keys. Everyone shows up. Everyone except one person. The next day, we get an email from the deputy head saying that Mr. X wanted to collect the key from him and not us. Petty. 
but as long as he signs the paperwork, I don't care. We then get an email from Mr. X. If these are for my deployment, can you install the following software on them? I'm one step ahead. Good morning, Mr. X. As these are for your department, this software has all already been installed on every device. Thank you, and I hope you have a nice day. No further response about the laptops. However, over the next 10 minutes, we receive three emails from him, all saying, Desktop Missing G Key. Later that day, we get another email from Mr. X. One of the new laptops is saying no logon servers when a student tries to use it. Can these all be checked, please? And he's CC'd in the head, deputy, cat, and one of our governors. Because of course he does. I then put Tyler, my new apprentice, on the job. Tyler spends the entire rest of the day logging on each of the 32 laptops and testing all the software and the internet. It turns out that the no login server error was because a student had accidentally turned off the Wi-Fi on that one laptop. Tyler emails Mr. X back and says that he can come and collect the laptops from the help desk as they have all been checked. Thursday morning, Mr. X shows up and then proceeds to take every laptop out one by one and log them in in front of Tyler without saying a word. Once he's done, he finally speaks and says, I just wanted to make sure they were actually done, and walks off with the trolley. Later that day, we get an email from Mr. X with a screenshot of a laptop. The others are all download speed 100 megabits per second or higher. This one is 40. I'll bring it down after this lesson. By the time he brings it to us, it's back up to a normal speed, as when he checked it was downloading a Windows update. Last thing on Thursday, we get a message from Kat into our Teams chat. Hi all, I've had repeated reports that since Monday, two of the computer rooms have had profile and image issues. Can someone check them first in the morning please? Hi Kat, we've not had anything like that emailed into our technical address. Those rooms were open to key workers' kids over lockdown, and we didn't have reports then either. Rob was also in those two rooms yesterday installing software for Mr. M and didn't notice anything wrong with any computer. What do you mean by profile and image issues? Hmm, interesting. I've had emails to me personally from Mr. X about the rooms saying that the computers weren't working because of profile and image problems, but he was really vague. It seemed like he just heard those two words somewhere and didn't really know what they meant. Thanks, Kat. I'll get Tyler or Andy to check them, but I don't think there's anything wrong. Could you forward me those emails from Mr. X, please? As I'm on my way out of the building at the end of the day, I walk past Mr. X and hear him talking to another teacher, complaining that since he signed for the new laptops, he now needs to check his ones weekly for damage, and that he thinks my team should be doing it and not him. I can say with the utmost certainty that I am now 110% done with this man. F this man. I'm still logging records of his behavior, as are the rest of my team, but at this point, I don't know if reporting him anymore is even going to do anything, as it's now been a year and he's still acting the way he is. He's the Thanos to my Avengers, the Dark Side to my Justice League, the John Doe to my Mills and Somerville, our nemesis. F this man. The comment section for this story pointed out something that I completely missed, and it seems like OP might have missed it as well. It says, So am I reading this correctly, that they put him on probation right before Christmas? and he was silent after that until just this past week, meaning almost exactly 90 days, meaning that he was waiting for his probation to run out before he started harassing you again. If so, I imagine the head will want to know about that. OP mentioned that they didn't actually think about that, and they were so close to the situation they'd never even considered it. They will be speaking to the head though, and seeing what comes of it. Do me a quick favor, take a look down below this video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're not actually subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Our next story today comes to us from Cyber Reborn. You stored your templates and projects where? Let's jump right in. So this is a story from when I was working for a local regional tax firm. I was the director of technology, our company with 300 employees, only tech-related employees and this was around 2016, we were still running Windows 7. I can usually tell if people have worked in IT just by their response to this story. People who have just shrug and tell their own story. People who have not either laugh thinking I'm joking around, or, in several cases, outright call me a liar. Anyway, so my office phone rings. Mid-level executive on the other end states computer is extremely slow and refusing to save documents. Great. 
This user is located in the building, and she basically handles anything related to records keeping or printed materials, etc. Basically, her use case is word processing all day long, along with some related tasks under Chrome, nothing else. So I'm needless to say wondering what she could have done to cripple her computer, which I personally had upgraded to an SMT quad and doubled the RAM earlier that year when it was decided her and three other execs needed better PCs. I march over there and her PC has apparently crashed, blue screened by the description given, and restarted by the time I get there. Upon further examination, I can find no issues other than moderately low disk space, 5 gigabytes free, and the computer seems to be running acceptably, so I tell her to call me back if it begins acting up again. As I had assumed the issue was related to long uptime without a restart, a major issue due to the nature of some of the software we were using, and marked her computer to receive a larger hard drive that weekend, as I believe it was only an 80 gig drive. Such an upgrade is more or less impossible to achieve during the work week. Anyways, I head back to my office, and 15 minutes later my phone rings again, and it's her again. This time she sounds frantic, and more or less demands I return to her office immediately. Not technically a power she has, but I have nothing else of priority going on, and it unfortunately is my problem when the computers start acting up. So I march back down to her office. It's worth noting it is unusual for this person to demand anything. She's actually usually rather pleasant to deal with. She states her computer is now running fine, but all of her project files, templates, forms, designs, etc. are missing. The gears start turning, and I ask her where she stores her project files. She says, well, I just save them in the same place I always do when the save thingy pops up. So I open Word, type some gibberish, and open the save as dialog box. My heart stops. She's using recycle bin to store everything. Or was anyways. It looks like when her computer finally crashed, it was due to exhausting available hard drive and memory resources. And because it went through the auto troubleshoot steps Windows 7 had built in before I got there, it emptied the recycle bin to free disk space in order to save itself. I inform her that recycle bin is a folder that's meant for files you don't intend to use, was never designed to be a working directory. All of her files are gone for good. This company had a small NAS for backups, but it was users' responsibility to store what they felt was important there. It was low capacity and quite slow being an older unit, and I never could convince the C-suite to allocate funds to upgrade it and she had declined to. At first, she appears to not even comprehend what I'm saying, and keeps trying to say, but there has to be a way to get them back, and when I finally make her understand what I'm saying, that everything is gone, and she is back to square one with everything, she says, oh my god, I can't, how will I, okay, 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 and I can tell she's pretty much on the verge of tears. Needless to say, the CEO showed up in my office later that day, and wanted an explanation of what happened and what could be done to prevent it in the future. My recommendations were not using recycle bin to store documents. The analogy I used was imagine if you stored your important documents in a trash bin and the janitor emptied it while you were away. That's what just happened, except Windows was the janitor and he threw them straight into the burn pile. Requiring a basic one hour computer literacy class for every employee, using a presentation to cover big if you do this, you will F us over things, declined for being insulting to our employees. Upgrading our backup system, declined due to cost. This is just a single story from my time in this place. I left after two years because the pay was terrible, $4.25 a week salaried, and the hours kept getting longer and longer, and quite frankly, the C-suite was hostile to IT in an unintentional way in that they did not understand we need money to function correctly like preventative stuff instead of just fixing whatever breaks when it breaks and hoping it does not completely foobar everything while breaking. Well, since Windows 10 came around, you can't save anything to the recycle bin anymore. Don't ask me how I know that though. So the CEO was basically saying, what can we do to prevent this from happening again? What, train our users properly or buy better equipment? No, idiot. I mean, what can we do that won't require any effort or money? That right there is a typical CEO. Thank you to both OPs for posting their stories in the Tales from Tech Support subreddit. They are linked in the description down below. Please go check them out. Check out one of these other videos. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories.